Hi everyone, it's Councillor Jason Zadrozny, leader of Ashfield District Council and I'm here with my compadre, Councillor Ralph, who is the portfolio holder for many, many things, but one of them is planning policy. And we're doing another special, longer video today uh, because today's the launch of our public consultation about the new local plan uh, that we have been working on for Ashfield. Now, loads of questions about why we're doing a local plan, what is a local plan, what it means for the district, and this video will hopefully answer some of those questions. Hopefully you'll like some bits of it, you might not like any of it, you might like some and not others, but at the end of it I hope you'll understand it a bit better, I uh, hope we've understood it because it's been a, a three year process that we've been working on really hard. and hopefully at the end also you'll feed into this public consultation because we've opened it for six weeks six weeks yep. six weeks public consultation because we genuinely want to hear your views this isn't a building application this isn't a planning application for us to plonk some houses or anything like this this is a consultation about where things might be for the next 15 years so the first of these questions is why are we doing this plan why do we have to do this so matt why is the council choosing or are we choosing to do a local plan right now so it is part of the the government's national framework around planning that we have to have a local plan covering the next 18 years um ours will actually go up to 2038 is, is how the the dates work out uh covering where development will be for housing for uh um, jobs and uh, employment uh, and they they have a national scheme for how we need to set all this out which will then go to national inspection once you guys have had your say on it we've made amendments listening to that and then we've gone out and consulted on it again but the the contentious part of this is is people obviously are, are concerned about housing which we will talk about later on in more detail but the government uh, set a, a target of how many houses we have to factor into our plan to be able to be built each year and that is something that we don't control that is something the government sets uh, which we have to adhere to so just to be clear the government said every council must have a plan yep the government say how many houses must be in that plan yep. and for how long it is. Yes. So let me just ask you, I know the government was saying Ashfield ought to have somewhere around 800 houses a year. I know you fought against that, the council fought against that. How many houses must we build over that planning period? So over the planning period, as you say, there was a consultation that went out last year where the government was wanting to push us up to well over 800 houses per year, which is huge. We've managed to, to negotiate that back down and fight against that proposal, but still it's a big number of houses that they're going to want us to build, which is just over 8,000 houses over the next 18 years. So they are some of the big questions. Of course, the local plan isn't just a housing plan, and we're gonna talk a little bit about jobs and about green spaces and shopping areas and other things as well. Um, but one of the things we wanted to talk about or ask some questions about are about how we allocate sites. So firstly, one of the things I want to ask is, could we look at any site we want or are we restricted in which areas we can look at for development? So the normal process is that uh, there is a call put out to any landowners saying would you like your site to be considered within the local plan? And that is what most councils do uh, for, for putting their plan together. We decided to take a slightly different approach and say, okay, what, where do we think it's going to be best to put houses in the local area? So we, we put out that call to see who was interested, but we also expanded our views beyond that to see where we thought there may be more sensible places to locate housing. And that's what we've come, come up with. And so while the government sets the targets, one of the things we have to do is make sure that we are putting things and building things in the best way for the local area to minimize the negative impacts of development and maximize the positive impact. And we'll talk some more about uh, that going on, but I, I'm, I'm absolutely convinced that what we have put together as a plan achieves this and does the best that we can given the constraints that we're beheld to. So uh, just to be clear, that is that we can still look at anywhere, but only if the landowners at the end 
agree to put their bit of land forward. One of the things I wanted to say as well, because there's been some confusion, is that we are allocating spaces um, against people's wishes. Now, there are some spaces that have been technically allocated retrospectively because the government has already granted planning permission for them. So there are a couple of sites, I'm thinking Miller's Way in Kirkby, um, Beck Lane in Skegby, sites like Gilcroft Street in Skegby. We haven't allocated them, and in fact, locally at Ashfield, we refused those uh, permissions, but the government then granted them, so we're just bringing that into line. That's just a paperwork thing. We haven't allocated those sites. The sites we will be looking at, in fact, we haven't allocated anything. We are The sites we're looking at, then asking you about, are the sites that you'll see in all the public consultation coming forward. So it is a bit confusing about what we're doing and suggesting and what has already happened, uh, and I want people to be clear because I think some people are deliberately trying to confuse residents for different ends and we're not about that. In fact what I did want to say is we've chosen to do this as a district council video so that you can be sure that everything we say is absolutely accurate and you can fact check it with the district council. You deserve nothing less than the truth. Now Matt we're at Briley Forest Park we're gonna have a little walk around and when we find somewhere lovely to sit, we're gonna tell you about green spaces and why the local plan was important to us about protecting them. So I said we were here at Riley Forest Park in Huthwaite um, and we've managed to find a lovely seating spot to prove what a jewel in the crown this is. But there are so many across Ashfield. In fact, uh, some of the most precious things we've got are our green open spaces. So one of the things I wanted to talk about and ask Matt some questions on is how the local plan seeks to protect these sites, these areas that are most precious to us, and also what we've done to use or allocate land as valuably as possible. Now Matt, the argument is about the ground field sites first. So my question is, is there any left? Why are we not going after ground field sites first? Well, we are going after ground brownfield sites. We are allocating within the plan every viable brownfield site that we can. We, we've, we've hung them out, we've made sure that we can do the, the absolute most with them so that we can use them up because we love green space, we love green fields and we are frustrated that we are being forced to build so many houses that we will have to build on fields but we are minimising that to, to, to the greatest degree that we can. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so every sustainable brownfield site in the district is now allocated. In the proposed local plan. Yes. Excellent. So then the only thing left is then to look at uh, fields. So it might be countryside, might be something else, but people see it as a green space. Yeah. And then potentially green belt in some areas if that's uh, a plan that is uh, a, a spot that's come forward as well. Yes, absolutely. So. so, but in those spaces, what are we doing to try and make them still green? I mean, I know you build a house there, so it's not a piece of grass anymore, but what are we doing to make these uh, new houses, new homes that are coming forward, as environmentally friendly and as and as green and beautiful as they can be? Yeah, so we, we're obviously very proud of our green credentials here in Ashfield, and we've, we've been working hard uh, within the local plan to put forward policies that encourage and will enforce brilliant walking and cycling routes to be able to connect places so that people can choose greener ways of travelling uh, but also we've been working with councils across the Nottinghamshire area to, to try and pull together what frankly the government should be doing in terms of putting together strict building practices to make sure that developers are building the greenest buildings possible. So in terms of the buildings we're saying they need to be as environmentally friendly as future proofed as possible and in terms of settlements we're saying they need to be as green and as environmentally friendly as possible. So my question then is going to be about the two large settlements. Of course people are most concerned about them because they're a large chunk of housing. In terms of the green bit, and maybe we can talk about them in the round as well, how are we trying to make them uh, as least harmful to the environment and as best positive for the area that they're going to be in the future as well? Yeah. So, part 
to the point, of, as, as we mentioned in other sections, is, is that they are mixed use. So there's going to be all the facilities there so that people will be able to access schools, healthcare, without having to travel long distances. But also, for instance, the, the Wyburn farm site down at uh, one of the, the things that that geologically opens up as a possibility is using mine water heating, which is something that's being uh, pushed very hard in, in the, 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 the green agenda at the minute. Because what we can use is the hot water that is down in the mines in the local area to actually heat the homes above them. And uh, the, the geology of the area means that that site is open to that possibility. And we would be very much encouraging the developer to, to take that forward. So uh, actually, let's talk about Wyburn for a little bit, because obviously that's the biggest settlement that we're consulting on. Mm -hmm. uh, and loads of questions about it. And I know we've talked about the possibility of there being a tram extension through there. Of course, it would be self-sustaining and not put pressure on Hookville in terms of it having its own secondary school, its own primary schools, uh, sports provision, shops, and, and employment as well but there's a, a, a gentle undulation topography there that lends itself to keeping it green people love walking through those mist kills what work have you done with the developers early on or what have they done with the council to try and protect as much of those characteristics as possible well the, the developer who brought forward that scheme has actually done an awful lot of work of, of making sure that those routes through and the connectivity are still there so that people would still be able to walk out in those directions and enjoy the, the, the walks all the way up through to Sherwood Business Park. So um, actually in the plans that they talk about keeping all of the hedgerows, all of the footpath links, all of the water courses, so houses are built in and around in sort of little pots of housing rather than being estate you know, to keep as much of those characteristics as possible. Absolutely. Well I guess that's something that people really need to look carefully at because although it might not be perfect it might be the least harmful way that we can sort of develop um, to, to hit the government's targets so please have a look at that. One of the last things we want to finish on this introduction to this video is actually our country parks and other, other major assets like Briley, like Silver Hill, Portland Park. Of course you'll know we're dead proud of all the green flags that we've won for having such excellence. Matt, how will the local plan protect and potentially enhance the major settlement parks that we've got that we want to look after? Well, any new development will be bringing in Section 106 monies or depending on where the government goes, an alternative to that uh, that we can then use to, to help further enhance and improve these brilliant facilities that we've got here right on our doorstep. Fantastic. Thank you. those things at the heart of the new plan and that's why we're here at Pinkston Road in Selston one of the places where you see how busy the roads are one of the places where the new made Marion line could make a massive difference to public transport across Ashfield and the rest of Nottinghamshire Matt can you explain firstly about this project what we've been doing to use the old mineral lines to get people moving again. Yeah, so with the main Marion Line project we put in an application for the Restoring Your Railways Fund which was successful so we've now been working on the business case for developing this so that it can open up for passenger traffic to take people down to an alternative route to Nottingham, out to Derby, down to Leicester uh, but also connect with HS2 when that comes along. Uh, so we, you know it's a real great opportunity to, to give people out in the rurals better connectivity but also get people up to, to places like Kings Mill where we also want to station added as well. And, and Kirby as well, that would be the massive, uh, 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 what is it called, the West Kirby Gateway. Yes. So that would be the interchange as well, so lots of opportunities for people to connect and get on trains much more easily. Now, trains are one part of it, I know you love trams a bit more than most people, <laughs> but also roads and infrastructure. Can you explain to us how this plan puts that at the heart of what we're talking about and how it might stop such big pressures on Ashfield as a district? Yeah, so the 
previous local plan didn't give any thought to this and so one of the reasons we've selected the spatial strategy we have about building uh, new settlements is for a start because all the facilities like schools and healthcare and local shops will be within those facilities uh, within those settlements there won't be as need to, to drive and, and travel as far because you'll have these right on your doorstep just a short walk away but also through other projects we're looking at securing tram extensions up through Hucknall further north so that uh, settlements there have got direct connectivity into Nottingham itself. So what Matt's saying in a nutshell is that the way we're trying to design the new plan will not add pressure onto existing roads and networks where there, there's already congestion or problems we know around Junction 27 and places like that but also will help alleviate it in some ways by using those areas and new development as a tool to design out some of those problems going forward. So this is one of the real ways that we can see the benefits of the local plan. Not everything's brilliant about the local plan, but this could be because it can take some of the real challenges out of transport and infrastructure. So one of the potential benefits of the local plan is uh, an improvement to all our town centres and local shopping areas. Now, as you all know, through the fantastic work Matt did on the Future High Streets Funds, the Town Fund, the Leveling Up Fund, we are investing huge amounts of cash in regenerating our town centres. But the local plan can be a benefit too if we get it right. Matt, can you explain why we see the town centres as important and what the local plan might do to help them keep going? Yeah. So our town centres are obviously a hugely econo important economic part of our, our local area with people being able to come in, buy the things they need. But obviously retail is in a difficult time at the minute with, with struggling for customers against online shopping. And by having more houses in the local area that are well connected into these uh, uh, big shopping hubs, they are obviously bring far more customers into the local area and helping support these brilliant traders who are already here. So we are here at Castlewood Business Park, which is actually in my ward, in Larwood. It's one of the places where we've been supporting expansion of businesses. And one of the things we want to do integrally in the new local plan is create economic growth so that local people can have a great local job uh, because that's what makes the world go round. So it's really important for us to identify sites in this plan for economic growth, for jobs. And Matt, that's exactly what you've been working on. Can you explain a bit more about why we've done it the way we have and where those jobs might be in the future. Yeah, so we've been taking advantage of the, the natural infrastructure that we've got access to here in Ashfield with the M1 and other great road links. So we wanted to take advantage of that so that businesses, both in logistics, in Meditech, uh, in man advanced manufacturing, are able to take advantage of that to bring the jobs here, but then get their products easily out and about across the country. And in, in terms of places like the new settlements we're talking about, there might be small areas of economic uh, growth in those settlements as well, so people don't have to travel so far to work. Absolutely, they're, they're mixed-use settlements, so there'll be business sites within the, the housing developments themselves, uh, but also we, we, we're going to be taking advantage of expanding the other industrial areas we've got as well around the district, uh, so that we, we can take advantage of the, the great uh, momentum that those places have already got. So this is one of the ways again where you can see that the local plan is not just a housing plan, it's a local plan uh, that we want to be ambitious to change the way Ashfield is. So there is a great place to work and play as well as live. So we've spoke about so many elements of the local plan, but of course the one that everybody's really interested in is housing. Yeah. And we're at one of the positive developments because I know loads of people really want to see some housing because we all want space for our families and you know children and our children's children to live locally. Uh, this is one of the sites in Sutton, we're on Davis Avenue. This development's actually going to be called Frog Hopper Lane. This is where the old derelict uh, clubhouse was. So this is a positive development and it's nice to see some real local jobs created here as well. Um, but I thought it'd be a really great idea, Matt, if we could round off this video just talking about housing, explaining the plan behind it mm -hmm. and why we've thought this plan might cause less harm and give us some more benefits than the previous one. So first question is, the sites we've put forward to ask the public about, why those sites? Why that plan? Okay, so 
you know, I think a lot of people think that we get out a big map and sit there colouring it in, deciding where it makes sense to put things. That's not how it works. The first thing we did was look at the strategy of what we wanted to achieve in the area. And the, the spatial strategy we therefore put forward was around focusing development in new settlements. Now, why do this? Because new settlements can support their own infrastructure, as we've talked about, you know, their own schools, their own uh, uh, places to work, their own healthcare. Um, and so we took that uh, spatial strategy, we defined it, we agreed it. We then left the officers to look at the sites around the district where that's, uh, what, which fit in with that spatial strategy. And they then came back and presented those to us. We looked at that, there, was, there were discussions about interpretations of things, which we needed to do because, let's face it, you know, planning needs to take into account uh, more than just the hard facts sometimes. But we ended up with the plan that we're putting forward, which I think is, is the best we can do with you know, one hand tied behind our backs. Okay, so that explains how we've got to where we've got. Now, can we talk just a little bit about the plan itself? So, I want to explain to people about the, 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 the basis of it. So, we're looking at two large sites for development because they support their own, uh, themselves, you know, they shouldn't put additional pressure onto anywhere else, which is great. We've taken out a huge number of sites, and I think of some like Molens, Ashland Road West, Beck Lane, oh, Beck Lane's gone back in because the government approved it, um, Sutton Junction, or um, because um, we thought they caused significant harm on floodplains or uh, special areas of interest. Um, so the big sites now suspect sustain themselves what about all the other little sites or smaller sites you know the ones that aren't a thousand houses i know we've got one in hucknall one in your ward in sutton yep. as well um that's where we're looking at the large areas for development what about all the hundred houses or 50 houses yeah. here and there so Yes, we've got other sites around the district that fit in and amongst uh, existing settlements where there are sensible plots to, to fill in with housing. You know, yes, a lot of them we would love to see not happen, but as we've already mentioned, you know, we have to hit these housing targets. But there's a lot that are a real positive improvement as well. You know, sites like this where we've, we've brought a real positive change to the local area and cleared up a grot spot. And there are plenty of those in the local plan as well. So it isn't all doom and gloom within the local plan. There's some real positives to be found as well. I think that's really useful because I think as local politicians and we represent you, none of us got into this because we want to build on green fields. You know, that's not where we got to. But we won the election and that means that we have to run the council and the government say to run the council you need a local plan. But what we do want to do is if we've got to do a local plan get the best out of it. This is one of those great examples where uh, to take some of the numbers it might only be 22 but we're bringing in social houses in the right place that gets rid of a cross spot. Matt's absolutely right about that. So if we have to do a local plan for us it needs to cause as little harm as possible but also be ambitious to deliver as many positives as possible. So that's why I think we've come up with that strategy. So just, I mean, Hucknall, Kirkby, Sutton and the rural areas have all got very slightly different plans because Hucknall and Sutton is the largest two towns are taking a big settlement or we're consulting, we're asking you what your views are on a big settlement. Then there are loads of smaller uh, infill plots or smaller plots that we're looking at as well. But as Matt says, we've already asked for those to be have uh, infrastructure like this built in. And the rural areas, so Selston, Jacksdale, Underwood, all of the sites that we're consulting on again in that area have already technically been approved by the neighbourhood plan in that area, which went out to a public referendum in Selston Parish, and the public voted for it in huge numbers. And we've not done anything different to that. We, If the public have agreed with that plan there in Selston, Jacksdale and Underwood, we've already allocate they've already got those houses allocated and that's enough and for the rural areas particularly they really need to see a catalyst of numbers so that they can sustain schools and a doctor surgery and those sorts of services they want so in terms of the housing let's just just get some raw numbers back in the head the government are saying how many houses in Ashfield per year? Per year it's 457 houses per year we have to allocate within the local plan to be able to build, be built. Now one of the things again that is often uh, a misconception with, with planning and local plans is this is how much we need to provide for in planning terms. 
if there isn't the demand there for people to buy them, the developers won't build them. And so actually, you know, this is a kind of worst case scenario of how many houses would be built within the local plan period. Okay. And is there anything else that's important in terms of the different areas, Sutton, Kirby, Hook, and other rurals, that's useful to let people know about this point, about why we've picked those areas in the way we have for them to talk about? Well, as I say, you know, it has been very much a, an approach of defining a spatial strategy and then looking at, at, at what came out. And some of those things that came out are unpopular to us. As, as we've mentioned, you know, there is one of the large settlements is in my ward. I'm not happy wow. about it, but I accept that to, to move forward and, and satisfy the government's uh, 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 forceful nature on this, that we have to accept it. And so I'm having to accept a large settlement in my ward, which, as I say, I'm not happy about it, but it's the best plan that we can put together for the whole of Ashfield cohesively. Okay, so look, none of this is perfect. None of this is driven by the council. We, I think you know the government makes us do this. There's going to be loads of debate between councillors, other politicians and residents about which are the best sites. But I want to make one thing really clear. You know the facts, you know the figures. This isn't our plan, it's yours. And from today for six weeks, we are genuinely, openly, transparently asking for your views. There's loads of ways to do it. Loads of things will be in the Facebook video. Click on our website links, email our planning officers, and we will be taking all of those uh, consultation responses into account. And this is the first of at least two, maybe three consultations where we come back, look at it, see if we can make some changes to try and get this as right as possible. Because we, I mean, we want to get this right because we live here, we work here, our families are here and we represent you. The most important thing you can do is not follow another link to another petition or somebody else. It needs to come to Ashfield Council. So please share this video. I know it's been a long one, but share it with people who are interested, people who are angry, people who are happy, and make sure you have your say. Because without that logged in there, we can't have a crystal ball. We want to make sure we represent everybody's views as much as possible. And believe me or not, if you don't have your say, we can't hear it. So please, Matt and I really, really want to, in the next set of meetings with our uh, officers, have reams and reams of responses, even if it's thousands of them, so that we can look at them in detail and talk about every single site if need be again. Thank you for watching. Uh, Matt and I are gonna have a bit of an explore around Frog Hopper Lane, and please make sure you get in touch and have your views. Because we really are listening. Thank you.